Every year he comes out, talks to 50 coordinators, coaches, scouts, executives. It's broad. It's deep. It's layered. It's smart. It's his quarterback, Tears, and he joins us live. He's a selector for the Pro Football Hall of Fame, covered every Super Bowl for 25 years. Okay, so I said earlier the biggest difference between Tier 1 and Tier 2 is not talent. It's that everybody in Tier 2 has a but. I love Lamar, but he gets hurt a lot. I love Trevor Lawrence and Jalen, but it's been one great year. I love Stafford, but he's aging fast. I love Kurt, but he shrinks in big games. I love Dak, but he's not an elite arm talent. Is that a fair dip? When you talk to all these executives, there's just apprehension. There's something yeah. with everybody in Tier 2. Yes, Colin. I feel like... For the most part, the guys that are in tier and one, one and two every year, you feel like you can win the Super Bowl with them. You might have to have certain things random, but you feel like you could do that. I do feel like the difference in tier one, you, you that's a great way of putting it, the way you, the, the butt part of it. But I think there's another gear in tier one, uh, another level of confidence in the ability to put the team on your back in pure passing situations. Because I think a lot of the other stuff, the play action game of Kyle Shanahan, the rushing of Lamar Jackson, it melts away in the toughest times. Yeah. Whether it's playoffs or whatever. And then you've got to be able to drop back and win from the pocket. If you're Mahomes, you can do that on one leg, hopping or hobbling around, and you're super elite. But those other guys can kind of do that some of the time. You just don't know how much you want to bet on it. So Russell Wilson ends up in tier three along the likes of Jimmy Garoppolo. Did that surprise you? And what were some of the comments? It's the biggest one year drop in the 10 year history of doing this. Wow. Uh, and it's the third year. It's the third year in a row that he has dropped. So there's been some acknowledged decline. I don't think though, that people just absolutely buried him. The, the comments were not overly negative. I think there's been enough of that. I mean, I think he sort of took his lumps and now people feel like he's a he's a diminished athlete. He's declined, uh, but it almost can't be worse than it was last year. Right. And so, if he has some semblance of athleticism left and some pride, you'd think he'd have. You'd think he'd have great respect for Sean Payton. Uh, he's got to be a little bit better. Now, I think the other component of this, Colin, is we we acknowledge Sean Payton is a great offensive coach, right? Right. And Sean Payton was five and two with Jameis Winston. He's five and one with Teddy Bridgewater and he's seven and two with Taysom Hill. So he's one with guys who weren't Drew Brees. But did he make those guys good quarterbacks? They, he showed an ability to win like great coaches do other ways with the defense. But I don't think we saw all of those other guys get on the Drew Brees, Brees track, right? And Russell's more talented than those other guys for sure. But that's the part I want to see. I, I want to see, okay, it's not Drew Brees now who's an amazing worker and gets a lot of the credit himself, too, and was an established player who'd probably been to a Pro Bowl before he, he, he came to uh, the Saints. Can Russell Wilson climb out of this and, and enjoy a second act? Yeah. Not sure. So I, I did think the one player I looked at and thought, Come on, Jared Goff throws a much better ball than Kirk Cousins. I trust him in a much bigger game. There's some numbers that tell me, I mean, good God, 25,000 yards. Only two quarterbacks have gotten there faster. I don't know what it is about Goff. I think he's a better quarterback than Kirk Cousins. I just feel like he feels, I saw him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mahomes. I've seen him in a Super Bowl. What is it with a Goff disrespect? I, I, the only guy I looked at and I thought, God, that's, that's almost disrespectful. What do you make of that? He's tier three. I agree with you in relation to Cousins. I think Cousins coming into the bottom tier two is probably, if we get to biggest surprises, that's probably it for me. But to me, most of those guys in that are legitimately, strongly, solidly in tier two can do more off-platform than Jared Goff can do. Yeah. I think there's a limiting factor with him that things have to really be right around him. And then you throw in the extreme swings of his career. He comes into the Jeff Fisher offense and looks as bad as a quarterback can look. Then he looks really good with a good team, talent, and with McVay. So McVay gets disproportionate amount of the credit. Probably deserves a lot of it. I think Ben Johnson's getting that credit now. Yeah, It's like siphoning off the credit from Goff. But I'll say this. If he does it this year again, I think he does come into Tier 2. 
What was the gap between Mahomes at number one and everybody else? There almost should be a super category of one, of one, because because really, Joe Burrow's one vote behind. But think of this, Colin. Let's just go bigger picture than who's in tier one now. Let's talk historical football. The legacy championship quarterbacks of you and my lifetimes. Okay, Joe Montana, amazing. But guess who allowed the fewest points in the eighties? The Forty ers Hall of Famers throughout the defense, right? Tom Brady. Great quarterback, great winner. Top 10 defenses all over the place when he was winning those championships. Patrick Mahomes can have a mid-defense at best, the worst special teams in the league. He can high ankle sprain himself, and he can put it on his back and win the Super Bowl. I'm not huge on hyperbole. Usually I'm the trying to be the voice of reason here with 26 years of covering the league, but we can't find this. Yeah. Right. You can't find this. It's it's really remarkable. So I think he's in a whole nother league of being able to do this without the defense, without things being right. They get rid of Tyreek Hill. They're better statistically on offense. <laughs> Who does this? Yeah. You know, a player that's interesting. And I think he's such a fascinating player. So he, he gets overlooked in high school, goes to a second tier college, really struggles first year. Dable elevates Josh Allen and he's remarkable and he's wildly productive. Then last year, uh, more mistakes situationally. I don't feel he's sort of as good as Burrow or Allen. Um, wh- when you talk to your 50 executives, coaches, where is everybody? He's still a huge talent. Are there any concerns about the Bills, Josh Allen? I didn't feel a lot of concerns this year. I thought people might be talking more about style of play and taking hits and all of that, but I think that he just had another solid year. And the, the team disappointment stuff uh, is real, but it's probably a little premature to be holding that against him. He's the only guy since I've been doing this who has been in it, I think, five years. And his quarterback tier average vote improved every year. Wow. He's the only guy. He's really a remarkable guy that way. It was even a little better this year. Now, Burrow passed him because that's fine. Yeah. But, yeah, I think I think people are still all in on him. I think if he starts missing a bunch of games, yeah. and, you know, I, I do think there's a usage issue there longer term. I mean, we've seen that with Cam Newton and some other guys. But I think his – I think people really like him. Herbert, the knock on him is, well, he doesn't win enough games. Uh, my takeaway is Kansas City's in his division. The AFC's loaded. Once his rookie year behind the worst statistical offensive line in the league, he went 31 and 10. I, I was like, all right, case closed. The kid's remarkable. I've seen off- offensive lines unravel Andrew Luck and careers early. Um, give me the average opinion on Justin Herbert, who I think everybody in the league gets, but I do hear the pushback is uh, close games, win a playoff game. What do the experts say? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's an acknowledgement in the Chargers situation that they've been a bottom five team on defense. And he's been uh, one of the main reasons they've won. If you look at the last two years, they're 28th in combined EPA on wow. defense and special teams. 28th. Okay. So wow. the four teams that are the four teams below them over the last two years are 51, 84 and one. Okay. <laughs> and the Chargers are 19 and 15. And they had guys missing all over the place on offense. We know their injury history. Um, I think people, when people see Justin Herbert in person, they are wow. Yes. They are like, Dude, this guy is different than I thought. I mean, I've had guys just say things like, our linebacker was chasing him on the edge, and, and this guy outran him, and we're looking at each other on the sideline like, holy, you know what? Like, this is this is guy's different. I mean, he's just a commanding big guy who can do everything. I think he played through the injuries last year. And the team success thing will, will hurt him eventually if it keeps going this way. Yeah. Um, if that happens, I think it's an organizational yes. um, deal with the Chargers, yeah. and we've seen it. Philip Rivers is should be a Hall of Famer, and you know they didn't exactly go deep every year either. So you've been doing this now ten years. Has there been because um, sports right now is going through a bit of a renaissance analytically in baseball, basketball, and now football? You can't pay a running back because I can contract. Yep. Has there been a big change to you in the decade you've been doing the quarterback tiers? Two changes. I think we are all smarter about talking about quarterbacks. Yeah. We're not having the Joe Flacco elite discussion anymore. We have a greater understanding of what it is that makes these guys 
uh, elite and being able to do it in the peer passing situations is a component. That's the thing I've learned the most in the last 10 years. I think that's come in the conversation. The other thing is what I mentioned earlier, the off platform ability um, is such a, it, it's the standard, it's the norm now almost for the top guys. Whereas if you go to the top guys 10 years ago, it's Breeze, it's Brady, it's Peyton Manning, yeah. right? It's a different type of quarterback. So I think it's evolved and gotten better in some ways. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of these quarterbacks, to be honest with you, Mike, um, I think it's the whole quarterback industry. I think it's a cottage industry. And I think all these guys come at a high. I have f two friends whose sons are quarterbacks. They had 10,000 snaps by the time they were 12 years old. I mean, they're just, it's a different world now. These guys can read defenses like never before. There's also a lot better coaching. I mean, I think there's just yeah. there's, oh. Oh, there's smart, there's smarter coaches everywhere. We immediately criticize the coach because when we recognize they're not putting this guy in the right situation. And we see it now when the good ones come in and it's like Andy Reid is still the exception and still exceptional. But there's a lot of guys sort of who can elevate their guy now. There's way more more of the ability to change to the player. And I think we used to have the whole thing. Well, this is my system. And if you can't, <laughs> if you fail in my system, you failed. Yep. Well, guess what, coach? You're going to be fired if you don't involve your system. So, and the player's going to get guaranteed money. And even Daniel Jones is going to get a $40 million deal. Yeah. <laughs> so, you better tailor the offense to Daniel Jones. All right. <laughs> so, Jared Goff and Daniel Jones in the same tier I don't love, but Mike Sando, I do. Senior writer for The Athletic. It may be my favorite football column of the year. Check out The Athletic. Subscribe. There's great stuff everywhere, Mike. It's always a pleasure. Continued having fun. Good luck on the golf course. Yeah, thank you. All right. Yeah, it's a fun column. If you have a few hours, download it. It's one of my favorite. Read it this morning. Read it tonight, you know, before I go see Barbie. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.